come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show and review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. In our quest for total world domination, you can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. These are the internet radio superstars. (laughs) Holly. (laughs) Michaela, Sean. And I'm Colin. Ron, don't die. (laughs) Let's go, 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 go. go. I feel like you're about to do like the Hot Wheels guy voice. (laughs) Micro machines, yeah. The micro machines, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tonight, uh, we want to talk to you about the dangers of psychedelic drugs. But first of all, we <laughs> want to, uh, we watched a movie that was chosen by... John, what did we watch tonight? Tonight, we watched Wes Craven's Shocker. A movie influenced by psychedelic drugs, maybe? Uh, what, definitely. <laughs> what year was it made? 1989. <laughs> um, Written and directed, I should say, yeah. by Wes Craven. And having, now having seen this... I see where this is the valley of his career, right? Th- well, I, I see. I We're see in what a came downswing. Out of this. We're in a downswing with West. You ever see the director? If you see enough of their filmography, you see little elements in different movies that finally come together later in better movies. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a mm-hmm. lot of scream in this. Yeah, I, mean, I think so. I well, not a lot of scream. There's a lot of different movies of his. Some are good, some are bad. I mean, I see a lot of different things. Is that just in this. because you want to see it? No. Well, I mean, I know it's what's a lot of dream but talk. I think you can, you <laughs> a lot of dream parallels. talk. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, maybe it's parallel to movie the scream you guys don't like, Scream Three, because there's a lot of Sydney's mom walking with the foggy hills and stuff that looks just uh, like this shit. Yeah, okay. There's a okay, lot. There's a lot of um, my soul to take in this movie. There's yeah. A lot of, a lot yeah. of my soul to take. Yeah. But even like it reminds me of Scream in its look um uh, i think wes craven likes his blood to look a certain way because it seems and pretty to be a lot of it yeah and to be a lot of it like yeah. uh, i haven't i Paint mean the walls the and walls the ce- and the ceiling there's a definite yeah. I, like i said during the movie there's a definite parallel between one scene in this and one scene in scream he four it's paint almost paint with blood he, i mean yeah. He right does. yeah but yeah there's I, I felt a lot of similarities to wes craven's later work in this and his earlier okay. work because this yes. does feel like this is yeah. him trying to make another freddy krueger absolutely well, absolutely that's, that's what exactly I was thinking. what I so yeah. when all did, the tv stuff right. yeah. all the dream stuff the quippy like kind of mm. sassy it, it is it yeah. is budget 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 Freddy Krueger. <laughs> well, you say like, budget, yeah. but it seems like they had like a a big visual effect. I budget. just mean in concept. Yeah, like, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll look up the budget, but it, it's funny enough. Um, when when did Nightmare on Elm Street three come out? Eighty seven. Eighty seven. So about that time, like Wes Craven had finished up his kind of work on Nightmare on Elm Street, like part three. Um, and yeah, the co-writers in this, yeah, uh, Bruce Wagner, yes. he gets a street named after him, and he's he the, does, and the he's the executioner, right? Yes, the guy who flips the switch. Um, but apparently, um, uh, I don't know if it was Wes Craven himself or Universal, but he wanted to, he saw what they were doing with the Nightmare on Elm Street movies and he kind of wanted something. This is his answer. It is definitely his answer to that specifically. Mm-hmm. Like he was well, trying to create a character. Yeah. Because could, if you remember, there was like famously a, like a huge rift between him and Bob Shea of yeah. New Line Cinema mm-hmm. and like he didn't see residuals on the Nightmare on Elm Street right. movies. And so he's like, yeah, every time they make an Elm Street movie, they're making money. So he's going to try and make his own guy right. that he controls. Something he can own and control. Pinker. Yes. <laughs> so this was the Not his best of, idea. hope of no. a franchise starting right here. Well, sometimes yeah. you got to throw away your first draft and, you know, maybe you should have done that with this movie. You know? <laughs> well, like I said, it's funny that, you know, you, you can take little bits from that stuff and he put it together later, I think. Yeah, he, um, I think in, this was, okay, so, uh, like, before, like, Jason Blum, uh, mm-hmm. you know, famously gave filmmakers a limited budget and said, do whatever the hell you want, mm-hmm. there was a guy named Shep Gordon. We talked about him before, I think, either, uh, well, actually, now this completes the four movies, I think, that oh. Shep Gordon financed through his Alive Entertainment. He was right. the manager for Alice Cooper, but, like, they were getting into uh, movies, and so they recruited John Carpenter and Wes Craven and gave him two movies apiece. And it was like, you know, as long as you can keep the budget at this, you can do whatever the hell you want. So we got mm-hmm. the people under the stairs and Shocker from Wes Craven. Ooh, see, mm. bad, run. Got, bad, uh, run. <laughs> bad, bad run. Bad run. Bad run. Yikes. And we got uh, They Live and Prince of Darkness from John Carpenter. I'll take those two. Uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'll take the. <laughs> yeah. I'll take the yeah. Carpenter option, please. Yes. Right. <laughs> um, I heard that, wasn't this part of like uh, Carpenter breaking a contract, which is why we got the Alive funding for these movies? 
I think he was supposed to make more under the Alive Carpenter funding. was supposed to make four? I, I think know, he was supposed cause... to make more, but he broke it off after two. He walked away from the deal, and so they decided, <laughs> Alive decided to take that money and invest in the West Craven. Was he like, I've done what, I've can, what I can here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe because, yeah, that's right. The Craven one, they don't overlap. It was Carpenter, right. it was like 80, 87 and 88, and then I think Craven's he walked away, and, and that's why we got the funding yeah, for this. So this is what you get when you give a uh, filmmaker, uh, like who has some street cred, you know, in Made a Nightmare on Elm Street, he'll survive right. and they live, or sorry, in uh, uh, the house on the left, the last house on the left, and yep. you go, here's carte blanche, do whatever you want. Yeah. Which we'll is, make us a winner. It's, yeah, it's usually <laughs> no. a red flag for me. You start, start talking passion project, carte blanche. I'm like, uh oh, these are, these are not good things. The irony uh, is, I think when I saw the movie Malignant this year, mm -hmm. for some reason, Shocker was like the movie that came to mind. You can see for that. Me. Well, just because of because crazy of the, fight scenes and the electricity yeah, like stuff and all. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. just, you know, it's Definitely. like, just do whatever you want, James. You know, we owe you. And so you get a crazy bad shit movie, and I think we got a crazy bad shit movie here. Is it any good or not? Right, we're gonna find out. Okay, so uh, I guess yeah. Tell us about what what the hell is Shocker about? Well, how many movies are in Shocker? How much information? <laughs> oh my god, there are. I feel like there's three. It's like an entire season of television <laughs> put down into a movie. In this, uh, so much happens, especially when I mean, and stuff starts happening that we're just like, why is this happening? Like. Yeah, there's a lot of movies in this. Yeah. We've got uh, well, uh, we've first... got a serial killer story. Right. Okay. We've, so we've what's what's happening there? A heavy family drama. Mm -hmm. Uh it would appear. Well, the serial killer story is that there's a family killer in this neighborhood apparently. It's all over in the news. It's like the, the night or uh, the night uh, the f it's like the family killer, like yeah, yeah, or some the mm -hmm. night slasher. Um but he's I mean he's killing families and uh, what is it? Um we're also introduced to our our main character Peter Berg. Is our star of this movie? I know, yeah. And now a director of uh, lots and lots of Hollywood stuff, because like Battleship and Hancock. Yeah. <laughs> wow, Friday Night Lights is probably what you know. Right. And then like all the Lone Survivors, Patriots Day, right. and Mark Wahlberg movies. Yes, yeah. Yes, so does yes. this start his football obsession? Is that? I mean, he was in this. <laughs> then he did Friday Night Lights. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. is this what started it? Yeah. There you go. He was yeah, maybe that was his favorite <laughs> stuff to direct, and he was like, "Sure, I'll get a full time job doing that." You know, I rewatched Christine like a week or two ago and I was telling you guys I was watching it. It's weird to think about John Carpenter directing a football scene because mm -hmm. that movie has a football scene in mm -hmm. it. And then when I was watching this, I was like, actually, I can see Wes Craven doing that. That's right. It feels more like <laughs> his sort of thing than John Carpenter. Yeah. I think Peter Berg liked it so much. I think he was probably calling for that second football scene that we got. Yeah, in this movie. we get several football scenes. Um, yeah, many. So he's a college uh, athlete. Yes. who his parents are killed. His family is killed, like, in the early moments of this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, this yes. is a lot for a person to process. But ma what makes it even... <laughs> I don't even think he processes it. He doesn't. This movie. He does not process no. it. This whole movie takes place over, like, what, a week? Max? Maybe. There might have been a gap where he packed all his shit. But, they're like, the right. first three, like, major oh, incidents say, happen in, like, 24 I know, I was hours. Like, how long like does it take for them to sentence the killer to... To, uh, to death oh, row. Oh yeah, there's because a whole there's, a there's there, gotta so, yeah. be there's gotta be a few months in there. That's when he packs up his shit yeah. and paints the whole place. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, okay. He paints it too. So there is a time lapse in yeah. this at some point. But it's not clear. It is never. No. It is no. never expressed. Not much is in this movie. They basically I think we'll just come to find. They basically just expect the audience to know that it's going to take a few months for him to be sentenced to death. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you have to know that. Yeah. Because they're mm -hmm. not going to tell you. No. Otherwise, everything else that happens happens in. A day. Well, when he kills people, he kills like five at a time, right? Yeah. Like that's yeah. the thing. Like, and he has hit like what three houses in like a two day yeah. span or something. Homeboy just taking sleep. out like fifteen people in like forty eight hours. Call in the national yeah. fucking guard at this right. point. Like, like I like your yeah. idea that we had to nuke the town to stop just, this yeah. guy because <laughs> Horace Pinker is on the loose. Everybody knows. Well, they don't know it's Horace Pinker. They they just know that it's a. They learn some it's guy. him pretty quick. Yeah, John yeah. Tesh from Entertainment Tonight is the inter the yeah. reporter Jeez. who's uh, uh, or the anchor who's telling us all that this doesn't date this movie at all. <laughs> um, so, but the thing is, so you know, Peter Berg's family gets uh, killed. Oh, so he has a sweet romance with uh, this uh, angelic beauty from his uh, college, right? Yeah, who gives him who looks like every other actress. I was like, that for the life of me, looks exactly like someone, and I can't place it. But we've placed many others that she. Looks, you she will looks be convinced like. you've seen her in something yep. before, but you haven't. You What's haven't. Her name? It's like. Camille Cooper or something like that. Cammy Cooper. Cammy Cooper. Cammy yeah. Cooper. Cammy Cooper, who looks like <laughs> everybody. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, so, so not only does his family get murdered, mm. but he has a vision 
of the murder happening, he has a dream because he like knocks himself out on the football field. Because he's extremely <laughs> accident prone. Yeah. With he's first- straight up not good at Moving? moving yeah, yeah. i was gonna say uh, moving yeah distracted by pretty girls and whatever taunts from <laughs> he, his, uh, he, he colin he flips over a gatorade table just by walking into it I mean, like, right the impacts in west craven movies are <laughs> yeah. like some of the like holy shit because like, he cut they're walking and he cuts at a like the just before a full run into the table yeah. like, he combined those two shots <laughs> <laughs> this whole table flips like with a, yeah. with like big jugs yeah. of Gatorade on and everything just flips mm-hmm. right over oh, he a, slams into a goal post yeah. yeah I was surprised he didn't have like spinal cord trauma from that for right? how hard he hit that well, like head on maybe like latent psychic powers uh, or something? apparently, apparently yeah. yes. this is not really explained yeah. a lot of things aren't explained like, it is kind of like the, malignant. there's yeah. a lot of uh, channel flipping that happens in the later half of this movie but it does kind of feel like uh, like maybe Wes Craven was channel surfing like in his head while he was yeah. writing it or something no I am convinced especially now that you've mentioned that it was John Carpenter and then he moved on and they brought in Wes Craven I'm convinced they would hey Wes do you have any ideas he's like oh i got a whole notebook and he used the whole notebook <laughs> yeah. that's my theory this is all those ideas that aren't, aren't like fully fleshed enough to be a whole movie on their own so yes. i'll just put them all yeah. together you know yeah yeah it's well, was, very bizarre yeah, i was gonna say it's influenced by stay tuned but stay tuned came out after okay, the there you go. i was gonna yeah. say i'm definitely getting but, stay tuned vibes but i'm pretty sure that was later saw this movie and they're yes. like we can do a whole movie out of that they're like we might be able to do this better right can we do this better i think we can yeah the uh, well, it was a Terror Vision. Anybody remember Terror Vision? That's on my list. Oh, okay. It's it? been on okay. my list for a while. Yeah. Um, less the visual effects aren't the same. Okay. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> so anyway, so he has this vision that there's this killer who is a TV repair man who mm. has a layer mm. that is all TVs all over the place. I thought we were coming back here. I know. For the mm. amount of money they must have spent right? like, on all these TVs. That's mm-hmm. what I thought. He's I'm got like, hidden rooms in the place. And like traps all oh, set up. a lot of the TVs are on and on the same like tragedy loop. Like it's yeah. all these like tragedy porn. Yeah. 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 Like, nukes and hurricanes and people dying. And, like, and KKK and World War Two. Yeah. yeah. It's dark. Yeah. 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 Was Craven saying something about television? I don't know. Or the well, killer's it, mindset, maybe. That's what I think going. somebody's perspective of I television. I mean, between between that and then the very end of the movie where everyone's at peace because the cable goes out. Yeah, I think yeah. so, it's Colin. His, <laughs> it's his parents' perspective. <laughs> but that's yeah. his parents' yeah, perspective yeah, yeah. on television, right? We talked about this on the People Under the Stairs, I think, or maybe it was my soul to take but like he grew up in a house where he they did not watch television mm-hmm. for like religious reasons right. so like very strict he clearly has a weird relationship with television yeah because of that. yeah and we said i think on my soul to take episode we're thinking that there's an issue with parents and uh hereditary uh issues that was i mean that's like the yeah. theme of my soul to take mm-hmm. it's also the theme here yeah um so the killer it turns out is a guy named horace pinker this is played by uh mitch Pelegi. yes who later became like, you know, he was the boss of Mulder and Scully on the X-Files and is like right. nothing like his character here. And you're <laughs> like, that guy <laughs> is playing like this straight lace, the head of the FBI or whatever the hell. Um, Good range. for him. Range. Yeah. What'd you think of uh, Horace Pinker, I guess, as your uh, would-be as new your serial new Freddy? killer? Yeah, new Freddy. New Freddy, because that's what they're trying for. They even give him little burns on his little bald yeah. head. Aww, they're trying. <laughs> <laughs> they're trying so hard. I think I think he served the role he was given. Yeah, well, well there you go. I find it to be very off-putting and not fun. It's not fun because he's brutal, nasty. He's yeah, just kinda, yeah. That's, yeah. We, we play a weird. I don't think like, it has anything to do with him. I think it's the role. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'd give you that. Yeah, we're walking a real like tightrope here of as far as tone goes. I think. Yeah, we get real serious with some of his stuff and the murder, and then we kind of fall over into this is fucking rock and roll. Yeah, there's a lot of rock music on the soundtrack. Music. I mean, Full rock music. You got to talk about the Shocker soundtrack, because this was one of the most formative uh, Oh, you mean soundtracks. this one that's sitting right in front of me, Colin? Oh, we have the compact pressing, disc on the table. CD right here. Yeah, because we had, I think, the Dudes of Wrath, right? was one of those uh, bands where they just got, like, Paul Stanley and uh, <laughs> Desmond Child, who wrote, like, all the fucking songs in the 80s. And yeah. Everybody together. Iggy Pop's on there, and Megadeth did a cover of No More Mr. Nice Guy. Yep. It was a thing. 
I like that. Cover. And it's like got just like uh, rock music as like uh, as score. In yeah, a bunch incongruent of with what is happening on screen. It's I the think 80s. I know, oh, but yeah. that's the thing. But yeah. it's like we're gonna sell that soundtrack. Yep. Damn it! I miss opening up a CD and reading the lyrics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I give us the lyrics to Demon Bell, the Ballad of Horace Pinker. Oh. No, I'm kidding. Um, that's Demon a song. Bell. I I think it being a like real deal, <laughs> real deal serial killer, and not like a paranormal kind of like character makes it harder to have fun with like this is just a guy that murders people that i'm supposed to like think is fun yeah like you gotta give it you gotta give it something a little bit more unrealistic about it to make it enjoyable and the device they use in this movie just doesn't work what's the device they use in this movie electricity and television i don't understand how the jump happened there okay i'll i'll set this up for the audience at home who's going like wait 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 you're about to lose me but don't worry oh you're 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 with us if you're lost you're in good company (laughs) well horace pinker is eventually caught for the murders because psychic jonathan is able to lure them uh, he's able to malignant into the crime scenes yeah Yeah. exactly basically and so he can bring his uh his father who's the chief of police like to you know uh to catch horace in the act of trying to kill uh somebody is it just me or is this like a fleeting gift because by the end of the movie i forgot that he could do this which that, oh, that he could. Why did he divisions. stop doing it? Like, no, he still did at the end. Remember, he had to like, you know, I'm going to go and catch right. this guy and bring him into the. And then he didn't want to leave because we got back into the blue. It's very yeah, uh, it's Nancy and A Nightmare on Elm Street where she has to go and fall yep. asleep in order. I mean, yes. it, you have the friend who has to yeah. like do mm-hmm. remember to wake me up. I mean, yeah, you know, it's very Nightmare on Elm Street. Very Nightmare on yeah. Elm Street. Um, the girlfriend is murdered. This is oh, like what? a uh, significant <gasps> Which, okay. in the guy's life. How did he find her? How did he know to target her? How does how how does the information exchange? <laughs> this is what I was saying. This is like, like this guy kills like he has access to the internet. Yeah, which, exactly. Because yeah. he found everyone real quick. How yeah. how is he able to target Jonathan's like closest family? Only. Oh, t- well, he's very fast, man. Yeah, I don't know if uh, maybe the first, the maybe killing the family was like, uh, you know, like a rando thing. Mm-hmm. But then it's like it turns out he killed the family of the cop who's actually hunting him. But the way he finds Jonathan is because news in 1989 had all this fucking detail about your <laughs> and was able to. Just so like, this is what no. This is when the cops no. were selling details yeah. for money to the local news. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say if journalism was this precise in the 80s. There was a lot of a lot of awards out there for for journalism for local right. journalism because that think, was amazing. Uh, in '89, I think you got a little more access to this stuff than you you than you do now. I'm pretty sure you could just walk into a crime scene. Yeah. Like, well, mm-hmm. there's it's pretty uh, bloody. This is this, but this is why uh, uh, police often hold back details because like they're putting it out on the news that like Jonathan Parker. Witness the murder. Right. Yeah. Can yeah. identify the killer. Was adopted. Yeah. He was eight years old after being found beaten. Yeah. This oh. guy right here, here's a video of him. We yeah. want you to here's take a, a recent video look. of him. Take here's a, good a video look. from 10 years ago. Here's a photo also of Also a local uh, football star. His yeah. eyes are green. He plays football for the local college. He's the he son has... of the chief of police. Here's <laughs> the girl that he's dating. Biology right. Mondays his and Wednesdays. address is just scrolling across <laughs> the bottom of the screen. Do we have his? Yes, we do. We have his bank account information. Yeah, yeah. He has an email. It is 1989 nobody knows how so is it a surprise then that the killer shows up and murders his girlfriend and then decorates the entire bathroom with Oof. her blood and her this is straight out of De- like dexter did this in yeah. like their first season like the bathtub is she's in the bathtub and it is full of blood and the whole walls like up to the ceiling are covered in blood yeah you're saying like, that dexter ripped off shocker i'm saying that they no. have seen this <laughs> i would say <laughs> But I feel like that bloody bathtub is imagery that I've seen a oh, lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you yes. know, in Dexter, it when you when you get to the bloody bathtub scene in Dexter, just stop watching because everything after that episode is downhill. So <laughs> that's 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 your end of the series. There you go. All right. So there you go. That's a big yep. red stoplight. Is the yeah. bloody bathtub? <laughs> well, they're able to track the killer down uh, at, after he kills the girlfriend um, because Jonathan is he does able another to, vision yeah, that he, he sees before it happens. But is that the one where I think he takes his football bros and says like, "Okay, you know, I'm going to go catch this guy," and in the middle of the the football field, they get in a car 
And it's like, you're going to be there for me, right? And then we're going to go get this guy. Oh, and just his, it's just, just the, the one, one bro. Just the one bro. The one bro. bro. Yeah. Richard Which, Brooks why, from uh, NYPD Blue. And the Crow City of Angels. <laughs> right. Why did they have to drive the car to the middle of the football field to do this? It looks cool in well, a movie. I, I feel like it's, I feel like they they feel safe there, Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no one's going to bother us here. There's this is no our home turf. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. In his, in his 1950s car. What was he driving? Yeah. Why is he driving like a vintage car? car? This car was. Is this a karate kid? What's happening? Cool? I, I don't know. I don't What's know. happening? Who can explain this? There's a lot about this. Like you said, we can't explain. I'm uh, telling you, a notebook full of ideas and he used all of them. That's, some, that's it. Mm-hmm. Well, they catch the killer. There's a couple of uh, daring do stunt moments where I think our athlete has to jump across a couple of buildings. Oh, this is a Looney Tunes moment is what you're saying, because there's a literal ladder laid down between two buildings mm. that the bad guy then kicks down so right. they can't follow and They just him. find this ladder like this has been going on for some yeah, time. Yeah, this is how the guys get back yeah. and forth. And, yeah. Mm. Those poor construction workers or whatever they are, they're not going to be able to. Okay. Yep. And then he <laughs> just jumps between the two buildings. Yeah. And then there's a big fight. He's an athlete, Michaela. I, I mean, at least they did establish that, you know? Yeah. True. So Horace Pinker is arrested, and we're like, okay, the serial killer. This is like, so this is basically the backstory of Freddy Krueger, right? Yes. Yeah, because the movie even starts out like a Freddy Krueger close-ups of a guy in like a workshop, you know, like putting stuff together. Um, so we've gotten to the point where he's been arrested. This is after the trial, and now we're going to the electric chair. Mm. But... Before we get to the electric chair, as the priest is coming to give him his last rites, <laughs> we find out what? He has a shrine, and he's worshipping an, a TV <laughs> demon. He's trying to give himself a jump from a TV, he's it looks got, like. Somehow, it looks like it. Did he actually have the, whatchamacallit, the car cable? Yeah, yeah. he did. Okay, yeah. he did. Attached he had, to a TV. Yeah, they were yeah. like, they were like <laughs> his his last wish was to have was to get a TV. Can you believe but, that? I'm just but, like, well, yeah, I kind of can. Yeah, I, I get it. It's but somehow he also got candles and jumper cables. Like, yeah. Where did he get that you, stuff? And those are some big candles. That would have hurt yeah. to smuggle in. Yeah. However, because he smuggled it in. John Tesh has told us that it turns out that not only was he a TV repairman and serial killer, but he's also uh, he uh, conducts black magic. Right. Because he has, they found mummified cats. Mummified cats, cat murder continues. I'm yep. sorry. Yep. Sean's got a streak going. might be on a streak of three at this point. I don't know. So he's yeah. been worshiping the devil television. Mm. And the- in this moment when he's be- you know begging for his life. Uh, the big giant TV lips, <laughs> all snowy, and you know TV. Stuff. I forgot about this. Hold on, I just, I need you to say that again. Big uh, the, snowy. The big giant TV lips. Right, TV right. Lips. That's come, what happened in this movie. It. Yeah, they come yeah. out and they say, "What you got it, baby." <laughs> it talks to him. Yep, <laughs> just lips. That is what happened in this movie. <laughs> yeah. He's like, give it to me. No and explanation. I need, it, a, I need a little more lore on this TV no, demon. It's, 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 I need to know what this thing is. A little something. I like, need something. Just... This is like the most 80s concept ever, though, right? Like, we're in this yeah. era of, like, censorship and, you know, Tipper Gore and, like, parents being so concerned about the media their children are consuming, right? Yeah. And so this is the most 80s message ever to be like, right. don't leave your, don't let the TV babysit your kids because right. something fucked up it might happen. It is actually evil after all, mm-hmm. yeah, that, this is a message movie, and I hate it. I mean, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't seem evil. It seemed like pretty chill, actually. Whenever it was coming out of this TV, evil yeah. always comes off as cool. That's how it gets you, Sean. Oh, shit. That's how it seduces you. That is true. Yeah. Oh my god, the, I'm being seduced. Yeah, yeah. Didn't you learn about the devil in the garden? Yeah, Tempt- temptation. Come about on, temptation. come so on. I'm so sorry. He can, the uh, devil can't show up as a nerd and win you over to his side, right? He's yeah. got to be a cool Fuck guy. Off, nerd. He yeah. has to yeah, entice gotta, you. With a little bit of honey. Bring him over seduction. With a little bit of honey. Right, and so just giant yeah. lips. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder what it, I Straight wonder, to the point. Yeah. Giant lips. Giant lips. I wonder what was happening before the cops got there. Well, I just wonder, is that like, I mean, I assume this is in the script, right? Like, this is how Wes Craven's going to visualize this uh, entity is just a big pair. Of, I mean, it's this is just... Bizarre, you know. Yeah, very I mean, bizarre. I, I like to think that he had he had one of those like lips phones, like DJ Tanner yeah. Full House. Yes, and he's sitting there in his office writing. He looks at his phone. He's like, "That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's it." Yeah. <laughs> what imagine, haven't they seen before? I imagine he reached over and then mouthed the "You got it, baby." <laughs> you got it, baby. And he's yeah, like, he's "Oh, like, that's fucking gold." Do you think the down. Do you think the first draft it was "Welcome to Prime Time, bitch"? And he's like, "Oh, wait, Harry did that <laughs> shit." <Yeah. laughs> he did throw some bitches in there. Yeah. yeah. 
because you know Freddy Krueger, he's, he's yeah. not mm-hmm. very far away. Who also came out of TVs. That's right, he did eventually. Yep. So maybe that's mm-hmm. where the idea came from. He's like, we need a guy who can just like live in the TV. But we haven't got there yet. How do we get him into the TV? We have an execution scene. We do. Um, Where he gives an extended monologue as his last words. Because we find out that it turns out he is actually Jonathan Parker's father who beat him when he was a kid. You remember me beating you, boy? I loved it. Beating you. And I killed your mama. And all that. What what does this matter to the story? It doesn't. Just some bullshit family connection. Yeah. Yeah. Wes Craven. Yeah. Again. It's a Star Wars effect. Everybody's related to everybody. Yeah. I think this is the thing, though, that Wes Craven's trying to grapple with in these movies is like, can you be your own person if you have a hereditary, you know, if a generational curse? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Basically, yeah. And he explores that with a lot of his characters. I mean, like, he's doing it with Sydney right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a thing that he explores in this one. Does he have an answer? I think he does by the end of this movie. Did he? At the end of My Soul to Take, what was the Riverton Ripper? It was like, maybe... Oh, there was a whole monologue. I yeah, remember some kid end. giving a really long, poorly edited monologue and being like, <laughs> yeah, all right, about- that's how we're ending this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, Horace Pinker is zapped. There's a lot of uh, lessons in this, Colin. Yeah. Isn't there? <laughs> they zapped by the... He rides the lightning. This is not the first time, I think. What the hell was... Uh, did you guys ever see the horror show... Um, it was actually it was actually House Four, I think. Uh, uh, no, I, I, know, I, I have, have not, not seen House Four. Lance I think I've seen Hendrickson up to three. is in it. I've only, no. I've only seen the first one. Guy's mm-hmm. killed by an electric chair, and then ends up like it's Brian James, who was one of the replicants oh, in the really? original Blade Runner. Yeah. Um, if I'm remembering this right, he haunts Lance Hendrickson. There's no. also a Prison. It was a movie Rennie Harlan made. I've heard of this one. Oof. Right? Well, Viva I Morton mean, if I it? saw that, I'd be out. So. Yeah. Was I was going to say, you said Michaela's then, magic yeah. words. Yeah. Rennie Harlan, she's out. Yeah. It was his first movie, though. Yeah. So, um, he wasn't Rennie Harlan yeah. yet. That's right. It was pre-Nightmare. It was the one that got him the job doing Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Um, okay, so zapped by the electricity, Horace Pinker's body apparently like uh, bursts into flame. And we're like, what the hell? We're halfway through this movie, and our antagonist is dead. But that's not the case, is but it? But we don't believe that. We don't get believe. ready for the same thing over and over again for the next 45 minutes. Because yep. then the movie right? becomes The Hidden. So, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It becomes The Hidden. It becomes Fallen. It becomes Jason body goes ju- to hell. Jason goes to hell. It becomes yeah. a body jumping movie. What do we think? I know we had, we had this conversation on The Hidden, but refresh my memory. What do we think of body jumping movies? I mean, if you do it right. It can be really cool. The Hidden was great. Yeah. <laughs> But I think that had a lot to do with Kyle MacLachlan <laughs> yeah. and his portrait. And what's his name? Uh, uh, who's the other guy in it? Michael um, Nuri. Yeah, Michael Nuri. Yeah. yeah. There has like, to be a good reason for it to happen. You know what I'm saying? For the jump to happen. Like, it, this movie does not have a good reason for it to happen. Other mm-hmm. And, like, it, the reason seems to change throughout the movie, too. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. The hidden, it's like, okay, it's it's, it's aliens. It, it, yeah, That's all I need uh, to know. It, yeah. That's fine. There's rules. Yeah. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't get this because this. it's like, okay, I get like the title of the movie is Shocker, and so there's an electricity thing going on, and he gets zapped by electricity, and then he becomes like an electrical conduit kind of thing. What does that have to do with body jumping, right? It's like, so we've yeah. kind of, like, I get where the movie eventually goes, where mm-hmm. he's able to like run through circuits and stuff, right. uh, but like, what does this whole sequence uh, have to, because he's still trying to track Jonathan down, Yeah, I guess, right? And so he keeps on coming in contact with different characters, including uh, Deputy Rick Cologne from Friday the 13th, <laughs> yes. uh, Jason Lives, um, who, so he jumps into their bodies and we can tell that it's him because they all have his distinctive limp, <laughs> which is why the character mm-hmm, limps, right. is so we can identify where he is. And right. of course you get that obligatory scene where the uh, killer jumps into the body of a trubic little girl. And then swears like a sailor. <laughs> well, the, that's always fun. That's always I thought fun. the better part was her just hijacking a bulldozer. Yeah, like, that, that was also that, really that cool. That was the highlight. Yeah. yeah, I do love the the just very quiet. Oh, I'm gonna peek around this corner. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> bulldozer. <laughs> bulldozer <laughs> sneaks up on them. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Because there's nothing more subtle than a bulldozer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely really quiet when it moves yeah, around. It's yeah. like a wow, Prius. Yeah. Yeah. Although he is, he is kind of daft. Peter Berg is a little daft in this he's movie. He's kind of an idiot. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of an idiot. Do tell. <sighs> well, he keeps... Every time the killer... he Every time someone is being possessed by the killer and he's aware of that, he always tries to stop and talk, re, and, like, talk reason to them. Like... 
the, every time yeah, like talk it out a, of them yeah, yeah. And it's like dude this is like wait work. hold on time out wait like you can't do that he's actually going to kill you but and he does then, it every single time and yeah. like more than once there's scenes where the killer or horace pinker uh, you know possessing these people does this whole thing where like you know, like he pretends like he's waking up, you know, like the character's waking up right. not possessed yeah. anymore. And like, right. oh, I don't know what I'm doing here, Jonathan. You got to help me. Like <laughs> he falls for that like every three time. time. Yeah. That's... So is it just, are we saying that Jonathan is such a good natured and hopeful person that he's snowed in by Horace Pinker every single time that <laughs> this happens or are the characters stupid? I mean, he has had a traumatic brain injury. <laughs> That is true. And a lot of he, uh, he very, ran full force into a goalpost. Yeah, so. and yeah. his family has just been murdered. Yeah, yeah. he hasn't processed. He probably violent. has some CTE, honestly. So yeah, well, he's you know, not right at yeah. this moment, he is yeah. saying things and then jumping into dream world. And he well. does make the immediate connection that like you got to keep an eye on the doctor. You got to keep an eye on the the uh, cop because I mean, is he? Uh, uh, maybe he's not daft. I mean, he may be the smartest person in this movie. He does seem to <laughs> most, the the other most of the other people in this movie are dead or possessed, so I mean, yeah, he's we doing don't have something. much yeah. to work with you as know, far as yeah. that goes. Yes. Yeah, why is he never possessed? I can't tell right. if there were times because there were there was a time when uh I think one of the uh one of the victims, I can't remember who it was, uh, if it was the cop or whatever, is like, you know, telling the oh, because the the girlfriend shows up as a ghost. <laughs> um, yeah, why? And it stands Don't in know. Between him and and Jonathan, and he's like, I need to get to that body, and she's like, No, go away. And then she shoots him, and then she with, chest lights <laughs> with yeah. a chest. Bear she Care Bear stares at. Really why does. did this happen? <laughs> like, why does she show up? You're like, Oh, where the, oh, we didn't. Where know there the fuck did ghosts? she come from? Like and she, where did this beam of light shooting from her chest come from? Yeah, does you, do you automatically get superpowers when you die? There's a ghost dimension now in this yeah. movie, and yeah. top yeah. of like, like the electricity dimension, she like has ghost powers. She showed up showed up before in a way that felt like okay she could show up like this it doesn't in a dream in a dream in a dream sure the other thing that felt like scream three when cindy's mom shows up but she shows up and and gives him oh she gives him the necklace this is important fucking necklace apparently the power of love this is very important yeah this This will protect you sacred talisman yeah we're i I mean they are literally just making up rules right the whole movie the whole it's just more making it up and going with it there's no set kind of structure there's no box to work in where we know of where they can you know but yeah why does it, why doesn't it? pinker ever jump into jonathan right uh, like he should if he really wants to kill him jump into him and slit your throat right yeah. like right. the movie's over right yeah, like apparently it seems he, simple. he did it to the coach yeah yeah just it, just do why? it why and we're never told that there's no reason he can't like they don't give any rules for why he can't jump. Right. No, no. Like I said, there was that one scene where it seemed like he wanted to. So they're establishing. Okay, so that, like, one time he, that he could, <laughs> and then the other times he just is unable to. For so he's some the idiot. Reason. Well, there's a lot of that because I mean, Horace Pinker doesn't have anything else really going on upstairs other than like kill, kill, murder. kill, kill, murder. That's yeah, what how he does. How does this guy survive? <laughs> like, how does he find time to repair shit when he's just like, I got to murder? I think right, he yeah. takes vacation time to do murders. I think so? Yeah. Okay, so he's not, that's his full time job. He's not out there murdering. He's a cable guy, right? Yeah, but he's like, he murders like 15 people in, in like one night. Like, right, how, how he's on business? vacation. Because he gets, <laughs> have to be. After the cops corner him and he kills like four cops. Right. right. He does. Then apparently he, then we're told by John Tesh that he <laughs> went to <laughs> another As we're house always told. And killed like a whole other family. Like overnight, he's doing all this right. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Vacation time. Like he yeah. doesn't stop to breathe. Yeah. So he does great cardio. Now he's, he's body in hopping. Shape, besides the limp. This is putting Jonathan in a peculiar spot because now it looks like he's uh, attacking a police officer. It no. looks like he's attacking a little girl in a park. Eventually, Alice Cooper's bassist at the time came. <laughs> Robert shows up it, as this big, like, uh, he's a construction guy. Mm. And then he ends up, like, uh, chasing him around. Then... We lose, we're like, okay, we're, we know that we're going back to Jonathan's place because he's recruiting the entire football team. He did recruit right? the entire football team. Well, the football team consists of uh, Richard Brooks, as we said, the coach, and Theodore Ramey. Mm. <laughs> oh, Theodore. Theodore Ramey. As he is credited in this movie, Theodore yeah. Ramey. Who plays Pac-Man. Who, is, who looks like Tobey Maguire, I just think, in this movie. <laughs> he does, yeah. He, well, I'm, I'm thinking like Spider-Man 1, Tobey Maguire with the glasses at the, the nerdy, yeah. 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 So you're yeah. saying that Sam Raimi cast Tobey Maguire 
to basically yes. play a version of his brother. I think they cast him Spider-Man. because he is a secret I mean, Raimi. Okay. Yeah, does that sound ridiculous no, to you? I'm no, just, I'm <laughs> laying it out there, so that's what we're saying. Okay. All right. That's it, yeah. Um, all right, so... Um, Prove me wrong, world. No, wait. I, mm. They, they oh. don't go mm. back to his house. Mm. They go to the gym because uh, oh, right. Jonathan has been shot, right, by the he cop. He did get shot. Right. Because, so yes. instead of going to a hospital, uh, you go see... <laughs> Like well, the, he's obviously fine. It's just a flesh wound. Yeah, yeah. it just grazed him. They yes. perform the surgery right there in the gym. I think they just put. I just they just bandaged him. Probably you leave it's the bullet a, in. Or the bullet went through. I think it just grazed him. Okay. It just. Yeah. just I mean, it looked a, like it's a, just a flesh wound. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looked like a wound, but I don't think they're paying yeah. too much attention. They just need a first aid kit. It's fine. Yeah, it's and fine. so for the convenience of the plot, so this is where like Jonathan lays out like the rules, I guess. Right, it's everything like, he's learned somehow. And these uh, football guys, like, believe him just on its face. Like, this is how we're going to get him. Like, you can't just go around, like, killing people that he's possessed because you'd be killing a person. And right. you can't force him out because it, he doesn't come out until he's used up that body's energy completely. There's only one thing that'll stop him, and it's at the bottom of the lake because Kane Roberts threw that fucking necklace into the bottom of the lake. This so, is a lot to take at this point. It is. And then <laughs> a he's lot. Like, Coach, why don't you go back to my house and, and get my uh, my diving mask because I can't bear to go back there again. Now, <laughs> I'd, be like, I'd be like, get your ass up and go get your damn mask. Yeah, since he's fine. Like, it's not like, you know, he's all bandaged up. In the, the, yeah, the, I think you're saying okay. emotionally he couldn't go yeah. back into the house. Yeah, I think well, it's yeah, what he was saying. Like, but his, his girlfriend was slaughtered there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's that. But yeah. he also, well, okay. and he, he saw only it. lived there for like another month. Or three months to pack up the place and everything yeah. being fine, but whatever. Yeah, that's true. He was there all. Pack, he was there all. The thing up. Um, Pain in the place. This whole this whole section of the movie feels very lifetime movie to me. Like it is. We also get a lot of heart to hearts during this. There was yeah. a lot of this movie that I was like, are we sure this wasn't a TV movie? Yeah, it exactly. Feels like it because yeah. there's a does. message and like they're always trying to cover their tracks for something they've done. It yeah. feels very feels padded out. The music yes. kind of feels a yeah. little. The, mu- music the score is, is bad. Heavily, heavily over dramatic. Or like yes. like over dramatic is like the that, word of the day for this movie. That like weird moment when his his football player buddy like says I, I could snap your, rec- your neck right now but I'm not going to because yeah. I'm not about that the, yeah I'm not about that yeah. I mean this I could oh. snap your neck right now but I'm not it's about that then doesn't he say something scene. else about like but who are you are or something who are you or something he asked him some like self reflexive question that sounded very after school special yeah you know right. like you gotta yeah. decide yourself man or some shit yeah. like that and you're like what the fuck <laughs> yeah, are we really on trying about? to make them out yeah. to be like best friends and like you guys just met 10 minutes before this scene it feels <laughs> like like that chemistry is not coming across Right, because uh, the dude, Rhino, that's uh, the yeah. character's name, right? Rhino, Pac-Man, I got you. Um, Rhino wants to help, of course. Right. You know, it's like, yeah. you do whatever, even though it sounds completely crazy. Nobody at any point says this sounds crazy. Because you protect your quarterback on and off the field, Colin. Is right. this a good thing or a bad thing? That Football. We're accustomed to movies <laughs> where when somebody comes up with an outlandish like uh, idea of like, this is what's actually happening. There's a killer who's come back from the dead who's doing these traveling around through bodies, you expect a character to go like, that sounds crazy, and I don't believe you. And then they have to confront the like, oh, shit, this is kind of real. And Right. Well, and they have to experience it in some way in order to be convinced of it. Or they should be. Right. In right. a, you know. That's the formula we know. Right. Yeah. And it works. Like, if you can show Colin, the character. you clearly don't know anything about football. <laughs> <laughs> it is a blind trust between that's Matt right. and Yeah, that's yeah. family. I'm yeah. telling you that the killer has come back from the dead, and he's coming after me. All right. Yep. We'll do whatever you need. That's yeah. right. Okay. Whatever you need, coach. All right. Yep. Um, it's so, like the football team from Beetlejuice. <laughs> so their plan, I think, gets... How did uh, survive that crash? I think it gets sidelined because guess? I'm not entirely sure. That's right. It does because the coach never shows up. They never get to go deep diving for right. the magical pendant. And so they have to go back to uh, his house where... This felt like a scene we could have gotten rid of like because it's the fake friend fight. Him walking into the water and coming back out. Like, we're really just, we're stalling here. For a movie that is almost two hours, yeah. like, we're it's, just padding yeah. out and we're, we're yeah. I don't know what it's we're It's the TV movie thing. It's, it it's, we need to fill up three hours of a TV block with commercials. So, yep. true. Put this in all these scenes that like, we can fade out to commercial and it doesn't matter. You right. know? This does feel like the extended cut with all the TV footage put back in. Yeah. Because yeah. yep. I was, like, often wondering, like, you know, obviously scenes ran long, but it was like, can you take this scene out and still have like all the narrative that you need? 
Because there's just a, an overabundance of narrative, it seems like. This yeah. movie has a lot of story. A lot. Of <laughs> a lot of story. Um, so, all right, this is another key key moment here because mm-hmm. uh, Horace Pinker actually does get forced out of a body and fights uh, in this scene. Oh, yeah. Don't they make their way up to like a radio tower? Here's the radio tower. No, no, no. This no, is before the, this. How, before he gets, this. how he gets to that point because he's able to make his fingers extend into outlet <laughs> sockets. Why? And who knows? Plugs himself into the wall and gets mm-hmm. sucked into the Michaela, wall. He's not like, of this world anymore. Yeah. And now he's pure electricity. <laughs> But he, this is, he's not even done going where he's going. Michaela, is, have no, you ever been pure electricity? <laughs> you know, I've been electrocuted I've pretty bad, but I've never been pure electricity. <laughs> I'd ask you to stay out of my business, Sean. <laughs> they put a, uh, whenever you see Horace Pinker, there's this kind of like uh, 80s VHS uh, uh, effect on Over him. him, yeah. Yeah, which I'm sure cost a fortune to actually <laughs> realize this in 1989. So he gets sucked into the electricity, into the wall socket. Now he's like, it was pure electricity. He can come out anywhere. Mm. Kind of like in trick or treat. Sorry, I just can't. I can't you can't. That. You can't help okay. yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, <laughs> right at the book. <laughs> so, um, and that was 1986. West oh, damn. Um, so. Be calling out a dead guy. Then second. he takes, posi- Horace Pinker ends up taking possession. Oh, then the, uh, Jonathan's arrested for all these crimes because there's all these bodies, and he's the yeah. the suspect. The Obviously. Pro- Why right. wouldn't you think he was the suspect at this point? Like, right. mm-hmm. Sir, mm-hmm. it's either the dead criminal or your son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we think it's your son. Well, son, uh, the dad deals with that like uh, pretty okay. He's like, uh, we gonna read him his light, read him his rights. He eventually gets there. Yeah. It's just like malignant. It's like, okay, you have a story, but guess what? You're still going... You're, You're still, still getting an electric jail. chair yeah. for this shit. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. But see, that's the thing. Even well, as the credits roll, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. His dad becomes possessed by Horace Pinker because he touches a light bulb or something that shocks this him is, and boom. Ugh. And then there's an extended chase scene. Uh, there's a shootout. It's like the end know. of Jingle All the Way. They climb up the uh, <laughs> fucking radio tower on top of the building. <laughs> this is a sequence that is usually like, in yeah. other movies Just reserved like for the end of the movie. Yeah. But here it's like uh, the beginning of the third act. Or yeah. Something, which is not this movie should have ended go. already. Mm-hmm. It felt like an ending. It felt like we were. Cl- I'm like, oh, we're close. Oh, yeah. we're not close. No. Yeah. Yeah. This is before we recruit the football team for this uh, harebrained scheme they come up with. He's not in the TV yet. No. <laughs> no. Thank God that goes on for so long. Oh, oh my God. Oh, yeah. There's still the fight through yeah. history. Yeah, as because, it were. because when they're on the top of this TV <laughs> tower, right, they end up dangling uh, the possessed dad over the, the, the satellite. Dangling, dangling, dangling yeah. the possessed dad is what Colin just said. That's a <laughs> sentence to describe this movie. Right? Well, I'm worldwide. Isn't that what he yeah, says? Yeah, I'm worldwide now. Yeah, it, that's not, not as great as. It, welcome to primetime, bitch. Yeah, but you no, know, he's, he's trying. He's not Mr. Worldwide. It is Worldwide. the TV movie version of that. No, yeah. Colin Pipple is Mr. Worldwide. You better watch out. I know. He'll come say. for you. He'll come for you. Elect- ball. Horse electricity. Also and, bald. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Um, so electricity so, and frequency are interchangeable. And we see <laughs> yeah. him get beamed apparently to the other side of town or something. Yep. Like becomes a glow on the horizon. You're like, oh shit. Okay. And it feels like the movie's over. But no. Peter Berg no. comes up because we haven't actually resolved anything yet. So no. Peter Berg recruits. But it's not his problem anymore. So the movie can end. <laughs> but Horace Pinker is going to keep Let killing people. Oh, he does kill is, more people. The, he does because he does, yeah. Peter Berg is arrested. But then it's like he gets out because as John Tesh tells us. Yes. That why, why <laughs> while, while he was in jail. Another murder happened. Yes. And it was signed. Horace, Horace Pinker. Pinker. <laughs> so they let him out. So he I like that he keeps taking credit. Yeah, you yeah. know, because right? he wants, he desperately wants this showdown with his son. He just wants to kill his son so badly. Which, just jump into him and kill him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like from across the room, torpedo style, and become like energy and just literally whatever like you does, want. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everybody else, everybody explode him or something. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you could explode him, but no. Instead, they fight through fifty channels. Well, how? So this, uh, the way that they're going to catch him. Is kind of also very Freddy Kruegerish, but what what do they decide to do? Yeah, yeah. what because what do they decide to do? Because this whole thing confuses dis- the fuck out of me. What they want to do versus how it was executed doesn't match. Seem, add up. It doesn't match. It seems yeah. like the opposite. What I think they are trying to do is get him out of the TV and then shut everything down so yeah. he's got nowhere to go. Okay, I don't feel like that's what they did. No. I feel like the Football editing team's the editing kill the power to right. the town. Yeah, but I don't. It didn't match. The editing didn't match up. From because they already hit the hit the uh, power and declared it's working, 
before anything Just like that scene in, in Phantom Menace, it's working. It's working. Well, yeah. that, just because you say it doesn't mean that's true. Like, it's you're bizarre. not building confidence in yeah. him. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, usually when you kill the power, the power goes out. Right then. Right then. But yeah. this is like, it goes in waves, apparently. apparently I think that's yeah. why they, they shot of the town with the lights, like, turning off mm-hmm. and, like, okay. you know, portions of the grid. Right. So but it hadn't reached them yet. But in the craziness of what this movie is at this point, I don't think you can rely on that information getting across to your audience. That yeah. it's a rolling blackout. Right. Because well, I think we're trying to th- go instantaneous. Yeah, you got to turn it off. It would have wor- I mean, worked better that way. Yeah. But they just didn't do that. But so it's a little weird. There, to get there. Yes. He recruits the television station to come out to the room where his parents were killed and just hold, you know, put your cameras here at live. Go live at like at five to midnight, five to midnight. I'm going to go find Horace Pinker. I'm going to bring him here. And so he goes back to his house. He takes a sit on his uh, reclining, vibrating, vibomatic recliner. Yes. <laughs> which then which comes plugged into the wall. And it comes alive and attacks him. I was not expecting this. Which like, feels like a Nightmare on Elm Street thing that would happen. Yeah, I was going to say, I was like, yeah. I'm trying to figure yeah. out what is in inbounds for him to be able to do. Yeah, the he, fact that the chair had eyes. <laughs> yeah. That's what did it for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he became that chair, right? Like the <laughs> right. chair isn't there anymore after right. he becomes. Yeah, the, right. Right. He had to rip the, uh, the vibrating power pack out of his side, the controls out of his side once he became human again. Yeah. Human. And then the end, they end up going uh, into a television set. Mm-hmm. Diving straight through, yes. Yeah. This is some professional wrestling nonsense. Holy It shit. really is. I saw this and I was like, this is why I don't watch wrestling. Like, like I could, he, I'm not entertained by this. He, like, he legitimately body slams him. It's pretty great. It, it they do a bunch of amateur sure. wrestling <laughs> through a bunch of yeah. mostly black and white television channels. Yeah, why, why so much TV land? Yeah, you know? Color stuff and there. they're... Well, I mean, we got Frankenstein because it's a universal movie, right? right? But they're but Alice they're back to video. but right. they're back to showing like the weird like morbid footage. Yeah, they they get blasted through like they go through World the War they, II. they see the Hindenburg nukes, like yeah, it's yeah, mostly Hindenburg. news and history stuff. There was not a lot of like sitcom or other stuff. Right. Like right. Leave It to Beaver was like it. Right. Yeah, like, he did run after the beef. They could he not for him. That was funny. Beef. <laughs> but this would have been funnier <laughs> if they could have gotten the rights to better stuff. Yeah. Like Just something or at least a not couple much. like show your pieces than what they did. Especially because yeah. for as, uh, the amount of time it takes for them to do it, yeah, right, you would figure it's so it long. It's really it's so long, long, and it's mostly History Channel. Yeah. Like you but know, they do yeah. end up crashing into the set of uh, '60s acid guru mm. Timothy Leary, yes, yeah. who is playing a uh, TV evangelist who's like, "More money, we need more money. dollars for but Christ." Like, wouldn't it be been funny if it was like the Price Is Right, or, and then it was like you know the View, you know, like a bunch of like yeah. non move narrative stuff, yeah. like you know the Weather yeah. Channel or something something even you know but yeah it's mostly black and white movies or history like b-roll footage and then and then like, john tesh's death yeah yes. yeah they Basically. crash through yeah. that yep they so do. not as interesting as it could have been but i mean but this then, was probably well i remember it being groundbreaking in 1989 and this is like you said a couple of years later forrest gump kind of perfected. right yeah but it's like so there's obviously the use of some kind of computerized graphics happening here uh, during, because I mean, like the abyss was the same year as this. I mean, like we're on the the fringe of computer, right? Effects. Well, yeah, and I'm curious as to how they pull this off because they are being composited into these scenes. They yeah. are not there, and but motion tracked into them. Too, they are, so, but yeah. they're also like they did pretty good for most of it on getting the perspective right of where they are in the videos. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering how much setup they had to do to shoot this on a green it screen to match good. it. It did it to did. match it. Uh, like the perspective, the distance where they were to where they were going to be in the videos. I'm like sure the, they had to line that up and like detail the war that. footage. Perfect. When they're wrestling through the streets and the war footage is like, who's that guy? Yeah. <laughs> it yeah, actually sure, looked sure. pretty yeah, good. Yeah yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. When they, when he busts through them and everything, even yeah. when they're on the stage at the Alice Cooper thing, I think they're behind people and stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. they, they, they did that very well. Yeah, they run good. behind the, the, the set in Frankenstein. Yes. And Colin mm-hmm. Clive's like, what's that there? Or whatever. Yeah. That yes. looks good. I like that. Integrated pretty well. I okay. Will say. But this seems like I'm because when we got to this point I'm like this is where this movie wanted to kind of go in some ways because yes. I'm not sure it really does feel like okay it's a serial killer movie and it's this like psychic you know thing hunting the serial killer and it's a body hopping movie and then it's like oh yeah I forgot the title shocker <laughs> and we're traveling through electricity and finally uh television itself and yeah. I felt like 
they should have been doing this more often. Yeah. Or like yep. instead of a dream demon, he's a TV demon. Yeah. Right. So he should have been doing this. Oh, yeah. he, he always comes out of your TV. Because the, fr- yeah, the right. first half is electricity. The second half is TV. Pick right. one. Pick one. Yeah. yeah. Like the earlier you murder should have been. We should have been clued in. Like this should have been part of him from the beginning. Like this is how he's yeah. competing oh. all these. This is why yeah. he's so fast. Do you yeah. think someone's done a YouTube edit where it's that scene in in the ring when Naomi Watts is watching the tape and it cuts to like the footage from Shocker of them fighting <laughs> <on> TV? <laughs> like, hey, has anybody ever edited this fight through it, into stuff? the ring TV? Right. Yeah. The ring video. That would yeah. be funny. Okay, oh, that's genius. That we we funny. guys, we got seven days now. We just watched oh, the shit. tape. <laughs> it's this. It's really this movie. That's the tape. Although the rules are kind of. Uh, uh, wishy washy. We'll just yeah. make them up as we go. So I, I was say, we may get 14 days. Just <laughs> avoid electricity and TV for like a week. Yeah, shut you your know? TVs off. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's the, well, I mean, that is ultimately the message, the message of the movie because uh, uh, Peter Berg's character is able to eventually trap. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> With a magic remote. Did we talk about the oh, magic, yeah, remote? magic remote? Which yeah. I, this has been done in a more recent movie, but I don't want to say what it is because it's a major spoiler. But I was like, oh, that's where they got this from. So he can seen it before. Pause, he can pause, pause makes uh, pause. I like yeah. the rest of it is weird. No, by moving the remote around, somehow he's able yeah. to throw yeah, it's not a into fucking the wall. I was going to say yeah. they discovered uh, like PlayStation VR like years before it came yeah. out. Like this is it now. <laughs> and he's giving uh, this lengthy diatribe about like this is what it feels to be a victim. This is what your victims felt like. Yeah, it's weird dialogue at this. You're moment. not my dad. Weird. I'm yeah. my own dad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically yeah. yes. That is yeah. basically what he's saying. I'm not you. I'm my own father. <laughs> It's weird. He does actually it's say fucking that. fucking weird. Yeah. It's I think weird. it's along the lines of like, I'm the only person who's responsible for me yes. or something it like is, that, but, but it's like, okay. Yeah, I'm my own dad. That's what yeah. he says. You know who my father is now? You know who takes care of me? me. I do. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> you just said you were your own father. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. But the, so this culminates in... Uh, this is where we also got the uh, uh, Care Bear stare from the ghost. Uh, ghost girlfriend. That before that. Was it... Was it I don't yeah, know. We go back to this that. empty. Is it, we go back because, to this empty blue apartment many times. Because here we get the. There's like a, a you know because we got to put like a timer on this to, make, to raise the stakes. It's yeah. like somehow his watch didn't work during this, and so horse yeah, this is also about, confusing. It's just like what time is it? It's three it minutes. Three to midnight, minutes before, but it's also three your minutes watch before. Watch is taking a beat. It ain't ticking no more. Yeah. I'm like none of your times match when this was supposed to happen. Yeah. So I'm a bit confused. Right. Right, because the power has been knocked out by the team, but like everybody's still here. But we can tell reality is collapsing because there's a lot more TV static in the world, and then uh, the um, um, the television gets broken. Right, it does break. There's still a camera in the room. There it is. So he puts the necklace onto the camera, which creates a magic portal. Somehow, magic power of love necklace. Yeah, but well, maybe it doesn't create a magic portal. It blocks think, him from entering the portal. I think that's it. I think he yeah. would have been able to jump through no matter what. But, but I think the putting necklace the necklace on it stops, stops the necklace of truth and love. <laughs> yeah. Stops Horace Pinker from being able to go through. You guys are doing too much like work for this the movie. Thing on, the, on the camera so he could go through and then his going through it like knocked the camera over and it crashed. That's why Horace Pinker couldn't go through. No. Yeah. But the necklace of truth was stopping him. That was I a force I think the field. ultimate message is <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't <laughs> fucking matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> So, of course, Jonathan Parker ends up spilling out of the television in his own apartment. How he got there. Oh, because that's where the fight originally started. Oh, he went into a different apartment at one point, too, during the fight. Uh, I'm just remembering all the very. But this uh, kid's still going to jail. He's still (laughs) going to jail. Many, many murders. No, because he's not off. Which I think is Wes Craven comes out at the end after like the power's been shut off. Horace is like in the burning TV. Like, if you're all right, he's still talking again. I'm going to get you. Yeah. And then he the, remotes the fire off. Yeah, yeah, the fire doesn't turn the TV off, but the remote does. Yep. The remote yeah. turns the fire off. That's right. And so right. now there's no power. And so uh, the whole town is bathed in, in blackness. And, and they uh, can finally see the stars come. Yep, they all, all the neighbors come out, but they are like, you know, hey, was that was that you was on hell the of a TV? Storm. Or, you know, whatever. No, they were talking about him because everybody saw him on these TV channels. Right, yeah. Again, John Tesh tells us this. He's like, he is the Greek chorus. Of yeah, that movie. was the proof. They know it wasn't him because they saw him wrestling with Horace. Right. Yeah. yeah. I know. This is a, in reality. They saw him Ooh. on TV fighting with yep. Horace Pinker. And so they, he comes out and now they can all see the stars, which is what we should all do. We should shut off shut all of our, our TVs uh, and go look at the stars. Yeah. 
Just go what appreciate I, the, 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 the headspace Wes Craven was in while making <laughs> this movie. Do you, wow. do you think the football team and their matching Letterman trench coats got arrested for vandalism? Uh, yes, because <laughs> yeah, he, they got left left there, right? right. Like, and <laughs> because he's on the broadcast, he's like, yeah. right when the guys are going to cut the power." Right. Like, yeah, well, he just told they just got arrested for breaking and entering and, mm. and uh, yeah, but he'll be able to explain it. Like you know, I had to kill Hillary Spinker. We all watched it live. Yeah. That's true. Sure. Know? Yeah. I don't know if Reiner's going to get out of this one. Yeah. Yeah. And in transporting those football players to the station, they all died in a crash and ended up in ditches. There we go. Mm -hmm. Boom. That's all I needed. Nice. Good job. Right. So that brings mm -hmm. us to the end. Oh, you'll also be happy to know that. Mm -hmm. uh, Will we? <laughs> Cammy Cooper, still with him, at the end somehow. True love. Springs Eternal. She's still there? She, yeah, her voice is. Uh, yeah. All right. He talked. Oh, again. Which, yeah. Like, I forgot. He's still okay. crazy. <laughs> this is just, <laughs> just nuts. He still this has a head injury. Like, in the scope of this movie, this is not important. But, it, <laughs> but you know what? What is? Whatever. Uh, it's the beginning of this movie when he like gets his concussion and she's like talking to him to see if he remembers anything, which he doesn't remember much. She says that like they haven't had sex. So like I assume they have not been dating that. Long well, she also no, I think that was dating for like, and I've uh, promised no, my body to you or something. Or something like, yeah. I think it was a joke. Yeah, I think, I think she was so messing too. with him. But do they state how long they've been together at yeah. all at any point in time? She says I, we've been dating for X amount of time. Uh, she says it there, but I didn't. Catch I think it. I think it was like a year, yeah. something, something, like, something that. like that. But yeah. she's also doing it in a joke, which doesn't make it clear to us because he yeah. hit his head. But he's also having visions. Yeah. So I don't know what to take yeah, seriously in this movie. They they make this out to be like a ghost level romance, and it's like we yeah. have no idea what their relationship is like because we got to see none of it. She is a nothing. Yeah, yeah the, she they is. they that th that's the only scene they have together before she dies is at the football field. Like she just represents true love. I that's think that's basically it. It because all those scenes at the beginning, which I think actually Sean commented on while we were watching it, and he's like, "Well, oh, we're doing a whole lot of." He said something about like a lot of. Um, scenes with this and i'm like this is all i'm sitting there going like this is all set up because they're gonna <laughs> kill her and then she's like the motivation uh, but, for the entire movie uh, you gotta have us get to know her a little bit more if you want us to but, care but, about but, her being the motivation but, but they had that music <laughs> Ah, the music. There's the music did do it for you. Like at least in Ghost, <laughs> it's, it's, we get again, to see a lot of their relationship before we understand yeah. before the tragedy happens. You know, I know. Like, and this movie has like a good like twenty to thirty minutes of like setup before. Yeah, I feel it's not like they didn't have time. They yeah. had the yeah. time. I think they it just, was just the fact that he remembered her birthday the day after her fam his family was slaughtered. That's how we know. Yeah, hmm. mm. that's it. It's and she takes weak. a moment to say, "I love you, Jonathan." Parker after yep. he's gone not to his face like after he leaves like, yeah. I, know, I know my whole family's dead but here's a heart necklace yeah after yep. she's so nagging him to go to football practice the day after his family right. got murdered it's right. like hey i think he can practice? take the day off i think he can get practice yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's bittersweet just a normal everyday power of love life. power of love <laughs> Huey Lewis. That should be our final statement. Yeah. <laughs> but there Huey is Lewis. no but there is no Huey Lewis in this movie. No. Should be, but there yeah. isn't. No, because he wasn't metal enough. That no, was not at this time. To be on this, uh, He's just soundtrack. too darn loud. Who's on this? We got uh uh Dudes of Wrath. We got I said Megadeth. this already. Megadeth, Iggy Megadeth. Pop, uh Megadeth Bonfire. Anybody? Bonfire? bonfire? Like Dudes are mm -hmm. dangerous toys. Bon Scott's bonfire. That's a joke. Maybe? Know. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, we are going to go around the table and we're going to tell you what we thought of tonight's movie. But first of all, we're going to answer some of your mail. And we've got a lot of it because apparently this <laughs> is the Halloween Kills mailbag episode. Oh, so we're no. going to do that. We are going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. The last thing we need is an excuse to talk about Halloween Kills, right? Well, here we go. <laughs> Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. <sighs> well, don't worry, because before that, there is some shocker and too okay, evil good. eyes stuff. Uh, so first of all, we should probably tell folks how they can get a hold of us by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Oh, by the way, uh, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, tells us that, yes, we did induct somebody onto the Wall of Fame with this episode. It was Heather Langenkamp, oh. who plays a victim in the opening title sequence. She's one of Horace Pinker's victims, but she was also in A Nightmare on Elm Street. 
three and a new, and and new and nightmare. nightmare. Oh, that's all okay. we've had her in. Apparently, I so. mean, she's oh. not in much outside of. I was say, have we done any other nightmare yeah. on Elm Street? Nightmare on Elm Street <laughs> movies, yeah. I don't know. I'm wondering if she like snuck in there as like just a character, maybe even Do in we costume. Do, well, right, because Dawn of the Dead or a cabin in the woods. She was on the crew, right? Yeah. Her and her her husband does effects work. Yeah, like effects work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, about tonight's movie, shocker. Travis Legler writes, and it says, Ah, uh, yes, a classic weakness of a killer: right. a TV remote. Yeah. I gotta admit, this movie is a lot of fun, and it seems like a surprise that the freak show is just getting to it now, but better late than never. There's a lot of movies out there, man. Well, <laughs> I, we all had this on our list. It was right? yeah, I, it, it was on mine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I didn't want to. I mean, we're trying to space out Wes Craven. I think a little bit because we we need a break right. once in like a while. Well, we're, we're, we're we're always thinking ahead. We're thinking spooky season, listener request month. There's a lot of things that go into planning when we True. pick things and why we. And pick them. apparently, Sean picked this the week that it was Shocker's anniversary, and it lit up all my social media probably because I was thinking about Shocker. great synergy. Amazing, great synergy. Amazing. Uh, Ed Snyder says, I can't wait to hear this. It's funny. My co-host and I just brought this film up during our recent Scream episode hmm. on the Film Effect podcast. The entire scene at the end with the two fighting through various TV stations always killed me as a kid and are uh, watching this. It's really fun film, in my humble opinion. Uh, Dom Cree says, what, what up, was Dom? Hi, Dom. He says, what was with all the running and terrible fighting sequences? I lost one hour and 40 minutes of my life to this shocker. 49 minutes. There you go. Uh, at least the intro track was good, I guess. My rating is negative 10 leg dragging movie bad guys who can scale, scale buildings and broadcast towers. No sweat out of 10. I nice. propose that whoever made this pick has to buy the drinks for everyone next week to make reparation for such a terrible choice. Oh, I That's like that great idea. idea. Yeah, That's a great a idea, really Dom. good idea, Dom. Yeah. Thank you for that. Appreciate uh, that. Maybe just Holly, because I, I mean, I rearranged a lot so Holly could be here, so uh, <laughs> I kind of forced this upon her. So maybe I'll buy Holly a drink. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> B-Movie B movie Vault says uh, it's a shocker. Is a one film, one watch film for me so far. I didn't hate it from what I recall of the single viewing a few decades ago. I've just never had reason to revisit it. The end credit song by the Dudes of Wrath, however, absolute banger. <laughs> Actually, that was the opening credit song. Yeah. Dudes of Wrath. The end was Bonfire that, and Soraya. We know that because I agree. The, the opening song right. was a good time. There you yes. go. Yeah. Uh, Richard Kratzer says this was fun, campy, bad in a good way horror movie. Craven really wanted Horace and the Gin to a certain extent to become as popular as Freddy Krueger, but Ghostface became his next best attempt. On a side note, I always think of a taxi cab when I look at Horace. What yep. about you? Yeah, always. for sure. Mm -hmm. They didn't get an old costume and everything. They tried so hard. Yeah, yeah. they really did. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says the second 1989 movie about a ser serial killer done in by the electric chair. It's been a while since I've seen either Shocker or the horror show. I remember both being fun. But I might have to do a double feature now. The horror show. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember not being very good. What was House <laughs> 3? Am I like, feature was House 3 the horror show? Yeah. House 3 was a horror show. Sorry, I got it wrong. House 4 actually brought back um, The Greatest American Hero. Oh, did it? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> show. Joey Blythe says, I remember watching this with my family when I was about nine. I was constantly thinking... I shouldn't be allowed to watch this. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. And you, but you can't say anything because you gotta, just got to let it ride so that your parents don't right. like shut you it down. Yeah. You can't bring it up. Cause no, you got to play cool. This again. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like yeah. Play cool. They forgot you were there and you're just like, yep. you're real quiet. <laughs> if I don't move, they, if I don't move, they can't see me. Right. <laughs> you know, like that sort of thing. That's how I get to watch speed. Yeah. Yeah. And all of the parents are sitting there going like, oh God, what have we done? Yeah, I mean, I suppose yeah, you could just like, okay, you're going up to your room, but mm -hmm. they don't. If they're cool. <laughs> Sometimes depends Sometimes, on how far the yeah. movie pushes them. Yeah. Have your eyes, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> and then leave right now. Uh, Brett Williams says of last week's movie, which was Two Evil Eyes. He says I love to listen to the podcast while working my Instacart shopping and hear my name and comment read off each week. A nice little hey, that's me moment while I work. But Colin, you've stumped me here on this one. I've never heard of this, so I got nothing. Well, thanks for writing it anyways, yeah. even though you didn't know about the movie. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nice. Thank you. Um, we mentioned on the Two Evil Eyes episode that um, Harvey Keitel's character is modeled on uh, Ouija, the uh, uh, the photographer of uh, crime scene stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And Peter Gatt says there was a film based on Ouija made in the 1990s with Joe Pesci, and it was called The Public Eye. 
Oh, oh, sounds interesting. Now, course, sound he interesting. says that. I'm like, oh yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. I'm curious <laughs> about that. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, you know, I'd be down. Oh, we can. We said also on that it's an Edgar Allan Poe uh, anthology. Right. And yeah. Sylvester Stallone has been working his entire life to try and make <laughs> an Edgar Allan Poe movie. Michael Whitaker says, you know, I'd be down for a Sylvester Stallone and Edgar Allan Poe biopic if he sang Drinkenstein during it. <laughs> Hell yeah, that'd and be great. All, just that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Here we go. About Halloween Kills. <laughs> we'll try to be spoiler free for those of you who, ha- who haven't seen it, but uh, just be warned. Uh, Brian Scott says, first, I love the podcast, but I'm sorry you all hated this so much. I'm surprised not one of you liked it. I respect your opinion, even though I disagree. I'll keep listening. Great podcast, guys. I loved your Jason Lives review, by the way. Aw, you know you what? If you That's like really that great. movie, I'm happy for you. Yeah. yeah, as long as there's, I mean, if you enjoy it. Hey, find your joy. I hope, I hope yeah. somebody's getting yeah. happiness out of it yeah. somehow. I didn't like it, but that doesn't mean other people can't you know, like it. There are some movies yeah. that it's not okay for anyone to like, but Halloween Kills isn't one of those. <laughs> like, if you like it, that's fine. That's good. Then good for you. You live in a better world than I do, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I have a hard time saying it's fine. But no, if someone I'm, else I'm sure likes it, it, it doesn't affect me at all. So I mean, that's like true. It, you know? That's well, fine. Spock versus Bigfoot says, uh, oh. your show tends to be a bit of a bummer when you hate watch movies, uh. but I get there's a market for that. I'm very sorry. I mean, we don't set out to do that. That's very true. We're not <laughs> no. purposefully. I mean, no. I'm sure. We even addressed almost, that on the show. Yeah. 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 The most, uh, almost 500 episodes. I'm sure there's one we brought and we're just like, we're going to hate this movie. Yeah. But that's not our intent. <laughs> that's no. not the, that's that's not I, the I, yeah. premise of the show. I never want to hate, hate on this. No. Yeah. I would rather be delighted. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Chris Huddleston says, I hate the idea of turning your brain off because these aren't micro budget indie movies. There's no excuse for poor writing and acting, but this time around, the slasher aspects were entertaining enough for me to enjoy while not giving a shit about the rest. Mm. That's a great point. Yeah, there's yeah, true. Sure. And, I, and as I've said, I mean, we've brought Halloween Resurrection, or I brought Halloween Resurrection to the show. Uh, uh, there's certain moments in most movies I think you, you can find something that you like about it. There's even certain parts in Resurrection that I like. So the, if you like certain parts, I'm sure I'll get to that point with Halloween Kills, too. Here's the, the big difference between Resurrection and Halloween Kills is Rec- Resurrection knows it's ridiculous and knows it's an insane movie. You know what? I don't know that that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it knows it's stupid. I don't think Halloween kills well, all we that. I was no, like, no, no. we'll have to cover that the next yeah. time Sean Next time I bring Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we want. Yes. Uh, let's see. Um, Mark Zidane. Okay, so on that episode, we had just watched the movie and had avoided all information about it. And now this is out, so I think we can say it. But we said about the CGI, mm-hmm. Dr. Oh, Loomis. Right. Right. Mark Zidane says, from what I'm reading, the Loomis effect was not CGI, but actual makeup. So uh, where would... So where was the rest of the movie magic that could have been used to save this horrible movie? Too many callbacks, <laughs> horrible dialogue, and generally just a horribly written movie. There you go. Uh, uh, Joy- I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Joey Blythe says, I don't know if the movie ever really started or how it was supposed to feel at any point. I feel like Michael could have taken down the whole town of stupid people without special powers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of feel that way. Those yeah, townies definitely. were hard to like. Yeah. Yeah. Except for Iron Lady. But other than that. I just I just admire her chutzpah for just bringing her on <laughs> iron. Yeah, the Johns that refabish his house. I like mm-hmm. I liked them. Yeah, uh, Amos Martinez says I know I'm in the minority here, but I love this movie and I really hated the 2018 one. This season of the witch and Rob Zombie's Halloween two are my favorite in the franchise after Halloween two. Find your joy. Yeah. yeah. Well, those yeah. are great that choices. Is, yeah. Those wow. are very, you, you have a very I'll, specific taste. I'll, I'll die in the Rob Zombie's Halloween too. Hill. Go I'll, I'll go on. on that one. Yeah, yeah for but sure. That's very specific taste. Yeah. Uh, Groovy Doom says, um, okay, yeah. So we were saying also David Gordon Green went on record saying that there were like, what, 20 years of bad uh, sequels. Mm-hmm. Uh, Groovy Doom says, I bet the directors of those bad sequels probably thought their sequels were pretty good too. Absolutely. They all thought they were doing something good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think anybody purposely goes out to make a bad movie. So, yeah. Well, Pat Nowacki says that's quite the claim because Halloween Kills was trash and Halloween 2018 (laughs) was only slightly better. (laughs) I love the bluntness of that comment. Was was that right under the previous comment? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's funny. Uh, Mark Harrison says, how could he say that was the best film in the series? Or how could he say that when the best film in the series, Resurrection, was released during that period of time? See, there we go. I think someone's playing the game. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Michael Piatowski says Rob Zombie's Halloween is a masterpiece compared to Halloween Kills. Yes. Yeah. It, yep. it has a singular vision. It knows what gonna, it wants to do. Yeah. I don't think we're going to argue with that. No. Yeah. Carson Snar says, I like Lonnie. He was cool. Yeah. Robert Longstreet is great. Act I is love good. him. Yeah, I, think it's I the love him. Good actor. Yeah. Uh, DJ Dogmanfish says, can we talk about how they tried changing the narrative on the boyfriend and his dad, Lonnie, like he was a shithead kid in the original? Then in Halloween Kills, all of a sudden he's a stand up guy. Right. I'll do anything like that is so much feedback from the previous movie. Yes. Like, I, I thought about it. I wanted to say that it feels like it, it was actually three years between the movies. It feels like within the movie. There was a three year gap. Yes, yes, that yes, sense? yes. That's yes. what it feels well, like. Why to does me. this guy yes. get a redemption arc for no reason? I don't know. And why? Why am and, I supposed to then, care? And then yeah, why fucking kill him cruelly? Enough, like, yeah. like, I don't understand. He gets a redemption arc like that happened off screen. Like you yeah. said, it happened yeah. in these three years as redemption yeah. arc, and now yeah. I'm just supposed to accept the fact that it happened and I didn't see it. Fuck that's, that. That's so weird. Three year again. It feels like they had enough time and it was very reactionary. It's a three year Halloween night. It felt like it. Yeah. Uh, Teresa Ann says, I usually enjoy an Anthony Michael Hall appearance, but his Tommy Doyle was per pure cringe in this. Cringe, I, oh, cringe is the best word. It was hard to watch. 100% man. agree. I usually like Anthony Michael Hall, mm -hmm. and this was hard to watch. Uh, Jacob Laws says, I really like this one a lot. It had some great brutal kills, and I felt bad for everyone who gets killed. I love the mask and got Darth Vader Rogue One vibes when he came out and massacred the firefighters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, All right, I can see that. Yeah. 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 Uh, DJ Malka says, I was so happy you guys mentioned the Star Wars sequels while talking about this movie because one of the first things I had mentioned to my wife was this is the last Jedi. Of <laughs> yep. the yeah, Jedi. it sure is. We all felt that, yeah. Uh, Jacob Cotner says, I just listened to your Halloween, ep Halloween Kills episode and as a person that loved the movie, I felt like Michael must have felt like getting beaten by that mob at the end of the movie <laughs> while listening to you guys tear it apart. But I pulled the knife out of my back to write you back and double down <laughs> that, in my opinion, this might not only be my favorite sequel, it might be actually be my favorite Halloween movie to date. Wow. Ooh, I'm glad you got what you needed from it. I, I want to know. <laughs> I want to know what that feels so like. So much. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know what other movies you like. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Give us a short list of 10, your favorite movies. I'm just curious for someone who loves Halloween Kills that much. I want to know what you like. I'm curious about you. We want to know you. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know what makes you Wait, was this Jacob Cotner? That Jacob Cotner, yep. Oh, Jacob yeah. We know Cotner. Jacob Cotner. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. He's a good I still want to know his yeah. top 10. I'm very yeah. curious. <laughs> uh, Evil Kid Summer writes in and says, did Evil die? <laughs> no. Unfortunately Because there's another movie. No. So. It did not. Money. They lied. Liars. Fake news. Oh, I don't know. Tommy died, so... Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, right. Sorry, spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, previous week, we watched a movie called Ginger Snaps, and Bishaw Foolery says uh, about because we were talking about uh, Mimi Rogers, what else we'd seen her, what she was good in. Right. Uh, he said, I just watched her in The Rapture. Wow. Ooh, I don't know. Not familiar with that. No, I don't know. Like, that in one. The, like the actual rapture? Colin like you were near one. her and she got taken? Like, or is this a movie? I'm curious. <laughs> the one with David Duchovny from the 90s. Mimi Mar Rogers. Best nope. Part. Have not there seen it. it. Nope. Um, Why does she get naked? She does. There you go. Uh -huh. okay. Wasn't she married to Tom Cruise? She was. Those are for his first wife. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. mentioned that. And I yeah. always forget about that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you very much, all of you, for writing in. Sincerely, we uh, really appreciate we it. We do appreciate it, even yeah. if we did eviscerate one of your favorite movies. I mean, sorry. Again, but we're not mm. trying to hurt anybody. No. <laughs> I'm just giving our feelings on yeah. it. Uh, okay, so now we're <laughs> we're going to do that again. We're going to give you our feelings <laughs> on, on tonight's movie, <laughs> Shocker, starting with... Colin! Oh, boy. Oh, we're going in order tonight. Mm. Colin, what did you think about Wes Craven's Shocker? Um, I admire... <laughs> Sure. Uh, a lot about, I guess, Wes Craven's go for broke. You know, I mean, this is kind of like, and again, why I thought about this when uh, we watched Malignant is just because it's like, this is a guy, like, if you look at like what he does, right? Um, he's borrowing from himself. So it's like almost, you can kind of excuse it mm -hmm. in some kind of way. It's like his influence is his, his own movies. You know, it's like, <laughs> uh. he's got something he's trying to work out in these different movies. So he keeps on going back to the same themes and all this stuff. So it's like, I, I admire that. I admire that. This is just kind of like fucking go for broke crazy. It's either like a cocaine fueled or an, a I mean, I said, you said acid, right? But because Timothy Leary is in it. I guess it was, oh, I was making that joke. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this feels like somebody came up with just like, you know, 
I saw a bunch of colors and I put it all down on, on paper <laughs> and this is what I read in the morning. I've been there. You know, um, so I don't, I'm, I'm not, you know, saying that Wes Craven was on anything. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that's just amusing to me uh, to think of. Um, but I think the first time that I saw it, I, I kind of have the same reaction that I have now. It is a mess. I think that's the best way to describe it. It's a mess. It's all over the fucking place. That's the totally. nicest way to describe it. Yeah. Um, it, um, I think Peter Berg um, is not like the best leading man material, which is probably no. why. Well, he was also in, um, shit, has he been on the show three times? No, he was in uh, Fire in the Sky, right? That we did. Was he? Wasn't he one? Of, yeah, he was one of the guys in the logging. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I just, I remember, remember, the glasses, I just I remember D.B. Sweeney. That's the only person yeah. I remember. Yeah. And there might be another one. That's why I was there. asking. I was like, I feel like he's on the wall now. Yeah. Okay, we'll know. have to come back to that. But <laughs> well, shows how memorable he is, right? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, he, yeah. I just don't think that he's necessarily the best inspired, uh, you he's know, not, leading man no. material. Um, the movie has a lot of uh, plot. Uh, and it's like, you know, a lot of times I, I complain that movies have, um, well, I guess I, I say it has a lot of story maybe and a lot of plot. I mean, there's a just like ideas. a lot going on there. Yeah. But it, it, it all feels kind of not, uh, like it doesn't all gel, yeah. but we're going to stuff it into this, you know, anyway, into this one hour and 49 minute, uh, running time, but it does have some amusing stuff in it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure. still, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it a, a pass as in like a negative, you know, like you don't need to see shocker, but I still do feel some kind of like, there is some crazy shit in this movie that if you want like a bonkers kind of uh, experience, but it's like, it's just not <laughs> what do you got to go through to get that. It, yeah. It's not good. It's not good enough to recommend to just like, you know, yeah. you know, like you got to see shocker. Um, I think, yeah, uh, people under stairs is better. And I think the other one on the other side of this was, um, uh, Wait, what? New Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the Serpent and the Rainbow. That yeah. was, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which eventually we got to get around to that one on this show. But um, yeah, uh, I'm going to say uh, you do not need to see Wes Craven's Shocker. And I'm going to put it like in the, you know, with those. Because Wes Craven, that's the other thing about like his output was like all over the fucking map. Mm -hmm. He would hit and he would hit like Hollywood mainstream, big ass, huge, you know. Uh, scream and uh, well, we've and, talked about he had three horror hits in three separate decades yeah oh, yeah. yeah last house nightmare and mm -hmm. uh, scream and mm -hmm. scream i mean that is like and cursed if you guys want to if you oh, really yeah. include <laughs> sure. cursed you know i mean and you know i think shocker to, shocker's continued more continued Scream three came out in 2000 so i mean he continued into there you another go. decade yeah so i mean that's no small feat but when he was bad uh <laughs> he was bad Mm -hmm. um unfortunately this is not one of the the better entries in the west craven canon all right we're going around the room uh mm -hmm. holly yeah what do you think is shocker um i'm i i agree with you on a lot of that um i will say that i'd rather i would rather watch this than people under the stairs same same yeah people under the stairs yeah, is I, really I, boring mm -hmm. I, I was it's, it's really boring shocked Colin. <laughs> yeah that back. was the yeah. shocker of the well, night i can't remember my review i remember I thinking favorably like, about that movie but i remember thinking been, favorably you, about this movie you may have been the like, one yeah. yeah um but yeah no i i think as bonkers as this is and i i do appreciate that it was bonkers enough that it was entertaining in a lot of moments. And it, and I didn't hate the whole thing um, because of that, but it's not a good movie and it's not a good enough bonkers to recommend it. It's, it is a mess. You, you are absolutely correct. That's the best way to put it. It's a clusterfuck of plot that just, I, st I stand by it. There is a fucking notebook and he used every idea in that notebook in this movie and it doesn't work. It doesn't mesh. It doesn't go together. There is a lot of story that I don't think he even understands. I don't think anyone understood it. I don't know what's happening in ha in most of this movie. Um, so yeah, as entertaining as some of the bonkers stuff is, it's too much of a mess to recommend to anybody. So I'm going to say you're probably safe to pass on shocker. You're not really going to miss anything. That's that's crucial to the Wes Craven catalog. Actually, can I say one more thing? Of course. I think it's <laughs> it's like the bonkers stuff that's crazy and that yeah. you're entertained by. Yeah. The movie eventually 
goes on so long that it sucks the air out of it. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. the problem. With Makes it. the joke that go for too that. long so it's not funny anymore. Mm-hmm. It never comes back around to being funny again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of holes in this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. Not gonna not gonna recommend. Mm-hmm. Michaela. This this movie's far too chaotic and unpolished for me to enjoy it. Like it's just it's unfinished. It it feels hackneyed and it's clearly a big budget movie, so there's no reason for any of that to be that way. There's no reason you couldn't get a more coherent script out of this. Like there's there's just no excuse for any of this. Like and I feel like my patience for this type of Wes Craven output is lowered after watching the people under the stairs. Like I have less tolerance for this because I'm like I'm just like that teacher that's like, I know you're not working to your full potential to the student. It's how I feel. I'm like, I know you're capable of better than this. And you, for whatever reason, you're slacking off and I don't appreciate it. That's how I feel about this movie. And I'm tired I've of telling him that. Yes. I've seen I, I, I know you're now. capable of better than this. So quit slacking off and do the work. You know, like that's how I feel about this movie. It's not like, and we've watched a lot of stupid chaotic shit that doesn't make any sense and enjoyed it yeah Th- but this is too laborious and too long and too messagey and preachy to enjoy yes. i don't come to these movies to learn a fucking lesson yeah and if you want to teach me one that's fine but be a, be a little <laughs> subtle about it just a little bit of subtext you know yeah. goes a long way so hard pass on this didn't enjoy it i did enjoy it more than people under the stairs but that is not saying much exactly so, exactly yeah. sean what do you think um, I mean, we've said it. This movie is a mess. Um, it reminds me the only the only fun I had, and I mean, there are some moments. It does go bonkers, and you're just like, "What the fuck is happening?" Um, I think there is enjoyment to be found there, but like Michaela said, it is laborious. Like it is, it's hard to get through sometimes. Um, and it really is just because of the mess. The editing in this is just. I mean, everything's all over the place. Um, the only fun. I really had with this movie is I saw a lot of Wes Craven's later work kind of like uh, the seeds of it in this movie, or I saw what he likes to do. I saw, you know, kind of what I think makes Wes Craven, Wes Craven. Um, I saw some of those elements in here that I've seen in later movies. And that's fun to finally connect because usually you would, you know, follow the progress of a filmmaker. Um, but having seen, you know, started later in Wes Craven's work, going back and seeing some of this stuff, um, it's fun to see the elements that continue to run through his work. Um, do you, and that's, I mean, that's the fun reason to watch it. Is there enough of that in this movie to recommend it to you? No, uh, this movie's a mess. Um, it's, it's, I mean, I'd, I'd say it's bad. I, I wouldn't, do you need to watch it? <sighs> Unless you're a hardcore Wes Craven fan, I don't think so. I'm gonna pass on this. Man, I had higher hopes for Shocker. I thought, yeah. I thought we were gonna get something here because I, you know, some people kind of hold this in very high regard. I think or enjoy the absolute weirdness and wackiness of it. But uh, I the Wes Craven w- well might be dry. Like we might have, we might have gotten everything out of it. We're gonna get for the freak show. But you can only find out once yeah. we go through them all. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of. I was gonna say there's there's there, yeah. some other stuff in there, but Stay this tuned. one is <laughs> <laughs> this one's a fucking weird one. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna recommend it. I don't. I don't think you need to sit through this to 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 get it. No, I'm pass. That's a hard pass. That's a hard freak pass show. On shocker. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Sorry, shocker. I thought we were all gonna do better, us. but yeah, that's your fault. All right. Well, thank you for sticking with us this long. And we're sorry if we just decimated one of your favorite movies. We do apologize. Um, Just how we feel. That's right. You got to be honest. So uh, next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Holly. What are we going to watch next week? Uh, We're going to move up a couple decades. We're going to shift the tone a little bit, and we're going to watch a skeleton key. All right. Is that oh. the Kate Hudson movie? The Kate yeah. Hudson okay. movie, okay. yeah. Because okay. that's yeah. been on my list. Yeah. For like a long time. <laughs> oh, all right. Have you yeah. guys seen this? Yes. I, no, I don't I think, think so. I think I purposely skipped it based on trailers. Yeah, so. same. I'm same. pretty sure. I'm just like, oh, let's, let's do this. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's uh, next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.